January, the first month of the year. A month of new beginnings, if you want it to be. A month that can set the tone for your whole year. Well, when I think of my 2019 self, I think of a badass. That's my goal for 2019, to be a badass, whatever that means to me. So for this month's recommendations, we're giving a nod to the badass ladies of Japanese cinema and TV so that hopefully they'll inspire you to be your own type of badass in 2019. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind by Hayao Miyazaki in his first feature film, Hayao Miyazaki showed the world the first of many strong young women he would come to write. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind tells the story of a post-apocalyptic future where humankind is scattered in colonies in what has become a toxic jungle. In the movie, Nausicaa, a princess, tries to bring peace back to the planet and the angry people which embody it. When it comes to what a princess should be, Nausicaa is the perfect example. A princess should be someone who's put on a pedestal because of what they do for their people, not simply because of what their DNA says. By fighting the bad guys and protecting her village, all while respecting her environment and the creatures in it, Nausicaa is the epitome of what being good should be. Lady Snowblood by Toshiya Fujita before the iconic Kill Bill, there was Lady Snowblood. There are not enough words in the English dictionary to describe how iconic this piece of cinema is. This 1973 movie is about a girl who is born to avenge the death of her family. Her mother brings her into this world in prison in order for her to kill the three remaining people who raped and tortured the mother, killed the husband and son, and took advantage of the poor during hard times. Throughout the movie, Lady Snowblood gets revenge on the people who deprived her mother of a happy life. This movie is not short on gore. From the shade of the blood to the violent gushing, Lady Snowblood is not for the faint of heart. This cinematically beautiful film really embodies what it means to be a badass woman and is sure not to leave you bored for even a minute. This is a true story by Paul Berkzeller. This is a true story is a tragic documentary about a story so strange it seems like fiction. It's about the urban legend of a Japanese woman named Takako Konishi. At the beginning of Fargo, the Cohen brothers state that it is a true story. So the legend goes that this young woman apparently went to America in search of the money buried in the fictional movie. I won't ruin it for you, but the story takes a dark turn. This 25-minute documentary, available for free on Vimeo, is a must-watch for anyone with a curious mind because it makes you reflect on how far you would go for something you truly believe in. In addition, if documentaries aren't your vibe, you should watch the 2014 film adaptation of the story titled Kumiko the Treasure Hunter. It'll make you feel the feels. Extra, extra. Uh, Yoshime Battles the Pink Robots by the Flaming Lips. It's, I know it's an album, but I wanted to include it in the recommendations because Yoshime is Japanese. Yoshimi. Um, but they say Yoshime, I don't know. Um, she's Japanese and she battles the pink robots and even though the Flaming Lips aren't Japanese, like, it's just a mood. Like, it's big mood. Like, it's 2019 mood, sis. So just listen to it it'll bring you so much joy it's such a good album and listen to it from start to finish because man you're gonna die it's amazing nana by ayazawa nana nana all i can really say is i ca nick when i was 14 nana was the show i dreamed of but never knew existed Nana is an anime that tells the story of two 20-year-olds who move to Tokyo in order to pursue music and love. The characters are polar opposites of one another, but are somehow both so incredibly relatable, it's hilarious. If you want to laugh, if you want to cry, if you want to escape your current reality, 
This early 2000s show about friendship and what it means to be a strong woman is for you. The series was never finished, but the true story, but the story is actually a manga, which is unfinished as well, but it will be finished one day, I'm sure. And um, if you want to know what happens next after you watch the anime, just skip to Nana Volume 13, the manga, and you're good. I would 1000% recommend you watch, and I'm serious. I love this show, and I'm currently wearing Vivian Westwood while I record this just for Nana, so mood. Lastly, instead of a recommendation, I want us to acknowledge the first Japanese female director, Tezuko Sakane. This actress and director was given a chance to direct the movie Hatsu Sugata, and it flopped. Although she supposedly made 14 non-fiction films, she was never given a chance to direct another feature film because after the war, the studio claimed that she needed a university degree to be a director. So she settled for being a script girl, an assistant director, and an editor. Although she retired when she was relatively young, in her 40s, I don't know about you, but I think it's really inspiring to see someone who was told no but still managed to make her dreams work. So props to you, Tezuko Sakane. You are not forgotten. That's it for this month's recommendations. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know in the comments below what you've seen or are going to watch. Let me know a recommendation and I'm going to leave links down below that aren't illegal because, you know, we don't want to get sued. And, um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon.